South Korea's present-day educational system is incomparable to any other countries. From as early as kindergarten, children are typically enrolled in classes at hagwons, which translates to private academy or cram school. As students grow older, they continue to attend these classes in a variety of subjects, academic or otherwise. In this video, we sat down with two Korean graduates to hear their experiences as former Hagwon students. My name is Do Hee Choi. I am a recent graduate of Yonsei GSIS and a recent graduate of Novasia as well. I used to be editor-in-chief and editor-at-large. Hi, my name is Hyunsoo Kim. I am doing a marketing intern at an advertising company. I studied media and communication bachelor's and master's in UK, and I just graduated. I attended Hagwon when I was in middle school and high school. I think the first Hagwon that I went to was when I was in grade six, if I'm not mistaken. And then I went for like a couple of years. So I lived abroad for most of my life. And so the times when I would go to a Hakwan was during summer and winter vacation, whenever I would come back to Korea. Like too much, like too many. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Korea and then for university and masters, I went to UK. So basically from like age four till the end of high school, I attended lots and lots of Hakwans. Like, I would say as a start, I used to like play like brainstorming games, something like Korean chess. So I had that as a first hagwon and lots of like sports activities like ballet, swimming, taekwondo and stuff. And then as I grew up more, it was like becoming more related to academic stuff. I attended the Hagwons for SAT and TOEFL. Yeah, it was just basically for like college prep. First of all, my parents, I think they're quite, they're like relatively open uh, for me. They were not really like pushy parents or they didn't ask me to like go to only good university or something compared to the usual atmosphere of Korea. But at the same time, it was just, I think it's like a system. All of the kids after school, they meet and hang out at Hagwon and all the parents are having groups and socializing at Hagwon, uh, the cafe at Hagwon or something. So I think it was just very natural follow up of me and also of my parents. It's weird, gr growing up in Korea, you don't really have time to think of the purpose of Hagwon. You just be in that system. So I kind of personally hope that I, me and my parents maybe, had like a little um, moment to like think like, why am I attending so much like at this age for this, so. The advantage of attending a hagwon is that hagwons are very systematic um, and it helps you with your time management. And so if you're in a hagwon, you know, they have a schedule for you. And so they kind of make sure that you get your stuff done. I think that's a major plus, not just for the students, but also for like the parents. They know that um, their kids are being productive and so kind of gives them a sense of relief. I think especially for Asian, but mostly for Korean parents, um, it gives them like a sense of relief that their kids are being productive and they're actually doing stuff. The most major thing about attending a Hakwon is that you're kind of getting yourself involved in the competition. And the competition here in Korea, especially um, when it comes to education, is very, very fierce and it's not very good for your mental health as well. I know a lot of students, some of whom are teaching right now, they're not mentally stable when it comes to um, being a part of the education system in Korea because they go to Hagwons and they're constantly kind of compared to the progress of their peers. And so sometimes they feel like they're 
kind of left behind or they're not keeping up with their best game. And so having that constant comparison is it's not very, it's not always good. You know, sometimes it's it's good for a source of motivation, but if you constantly have that, it's it's not, you know, good for your mental stable stability. So I think that's a big downside of attending Hagwons. I think a major downside for the teachers as well is that, I mean, I've taught at several Hagwons before, and it's having to live up to the expectations of the parents. There's a certain level of expectation that the parents want their kids to reach. Sometimes it's attainable, sometimes it's very idealistic and unrealistic. So having to kind of keep up with that can be hard for both the teacher and the students. Positive would be, as I said before, um, it was more like a joining the community. It's a very Korean way, private, expensive community center. So you go and meet your friends. You kind of get in the safety zone because like you have your other parents that look after you and you like meet your friends, you hang out and you kind of catch up. But there are more withdrawals for sure on Hagwon because it's like getting lots of summaries since like the beginning. For example, there's a book called Hamlet and it's a must read for you to think about the culture, the literature. But it is a bit hard for you to read and understand everything for your age. So you get a textbook. A Hagwon gives the summaries for the textbook. And then if you cannot attend the class, they give you the summarized video of like 10 minutes. And it is almost impossible to understand or have a chance to get ability to try to explore it and learn. You just need summary. Since the beginning, from the young age, you kind of try to find and get used to get a shortcut on getting the right answer. And you never have time to fail or take time to try to understand or misunderstand a long book. And you just need lots of lots of summaries and it just goes over and over and over again for me i really really got into studying when i was in high school like so the last two years of my high school was when i studied the most so my schedule in korea when i was attending hagwon looked like i had to be there by like eight and i would be there until nine or ten it was just because i had to attend the vacation hardcore schedule so i was basically at the hagwon for more than like 12 hours a day like and i would only leave for like an hour for lunch break and dinner break i think it was effective for me um to a certain extent because uh, as i mentioned in one of the advantages of being at a hot one is that your time is managed by the teachers there and they make sure that you're being productive because you have to give them results them results but also yourself results as well so i think during my time there i was productive but i was definitely very drained by not just the schedule but the amount of work that i was swamped with so that was hard to manage for a young age, like elementary school, school finished around at 3 p.m. Then I had a little snack and from 5 till like 7, I had one sports related activity, then English or math and then Korean. So usually I went to like 2 or 3 after school. It's getting even more for like middle school or high school. You just don't have your personal life. You spend uh, your time at Hagwon during the weekends even more intense than weekdays. And even sometimes high schools also runs private lessons too. It is open to anyone they say, but they kind of like categorize the students and give intense classes after school. So it was at the end, it was more like nine to 11 or 9 to 12, you just sit different classes. Um, Hagwon is very convenient and at that time, especially when you're young, you don't know how to or what to do to get more uh, progress. Uh, they act like they have an answer for you and it's already done from 
another person before and is a lot of summaries and it looks fancy with nice design but it's kind of it's like a shortcut that it will never help you to know what is to take uh, the progress in in your life or in your LA study. I think it's like a drug, if I'm being completely honest. Attending Hakuan is kind of like a drug because I would understand why you would need to go to a Hakuan when, if you're a child because you need kind of a guidance just on your academic progress but as I said on your time management and just to like have someone help you keep up but once you're an adult I would assume that you would be and you have to kind of do those things on your own you know time progress academic progress those are the kinds of things that you have to keep record keep track of at your own pace but then feeling the need to go to a hagwon even after your high school years kind of shows that it's a system that they were so used to ever since they were young i see like even kindergartners go to hagwons and so if you've been a part of that system for your entire life, it's the first thing and the most easiest thing that you can depend on and rely on once you have a goal to achieve. And so I think that's the thing about Korea. It's like if you have a goal to achieve, whether it's academic or in life, you resort to hagwons. Little kids and children who are a part of that kind of system for years, they probably it's hard for them to know better. When they grow up and become adults, and let's say like they wanna become a civil servant, I would say that the first thing that they would probably do is enroll themselves in a hagwon. And so is our society going in the right direction? I wish it was, but I don't think it is. If this goes on for a really, really long time, the only scapegoats are going to be the young children. Private schools and lessons are one of the biggest industry in Korea, I think. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's just because people got used to it. So even when you grew up, even for universities, you have, you can easily find private lessons and private classes like Hagwon. And for anything, you can find Hagwon for anything like English or getting a job or getting interviewed, like practicing interview. Usually when you talk to people, if you want to improve your act, you have hagwon. You can like find hagwon for everything. And I think it's just too much and people just got used to what they think is convenient and think they learned something. And because you have this kind of timetable um, and you go there every two times a week, you think that you're developing, but it is not. It's kind of related to fast atmosphere that you have to get faster you have to get it right and many skills i think we really need to think about this industry a few weeks ago i watched this lecture um by He's one of the most famous Hagwon teachers, the number one math um, Hagwon teacher in Korea. And he was saying in his lecture, it was very ironic for me to see him say in his lecture that in a couple of years time, this entire preparation for college kind of program and test for college preparation is probably going to blow up and it's going to, you know, all kind of disappear. I did kind of sense that Korea was shifting towards not placing as heavy an importance on education and college admissions compared to before. A slight shift, not a major shift, but like a slight shift in the long run. I don't think it's going to be as effective as it was before. And that's a change that I'm rooting for because one of the major reasons why the Hagwon industry is doing very well was that a lot of parents think that they're kind of behind if they don't put their kids within the hagwon environment because everyone is doing it you know everyone is a part of a hagwon everyone is getting ahead they're reviewing for their next year grade level subjects and so 
they always feel behind. It's not necessarily the students themselves who tell their parents that they want to go to an academy or a hakwan. It's usually the parents who put their kids in the hakwan, partly for their own satisfaction because they can't stand their kids, you know, just like playing around um, at home. They'd rather have them be at a hagwon and think that they're being productive. If the parents kind of realize one by one, you know, slowly and slowly that being at a hagwon doesn't always mean that your child is being productive. Being at a hagwon doesn't always put your child ahead. It doesn't always mean that they're going to get into the best colleges that you think are going to promise them a good life. The way how we learn I hope that the value of it would get more, get more focused. I hope that we kind of try to change the character and try to make the environment that especially children have time to learn something, fail on something, and know that hagwon is not the best way to manage your life. But I don't think that will happen very soon because it's just like. It's a big industry and it's just so juicy for students and also for teachers. And it just looked that it's like the fastest and the most convenient way to learn something. So it would be very hard to like change that mindset and character. I think I said a lot of um, negative aspects of Hagwan, but then the problem only arises when it's used to a very, very severe kind of extent. I think that everything, if done in moderation, is, is always going to be beneficial. There are always, you know, good sides and perks to Hagwans. I know like my student, one of my students, the Chudis that I teach goes to like four or five a day. And so that's, that's obviously very severe for a middle schooler. I don't know how this concept ar arose in Korea, but obviously it's going to take the same amount of years and time and effort it took to kind of bring up this concept as it is going to you know, have it die down. I do hope that our society slowly begins to realize that not everyone has to go towards having, you know, a bachelor's degree or a graduate degree. I mean, as a student who didn't really have time to think about why I am learning or why am I spending so much time on like getting good grades or setting my own goal, I think, I just hope that we gave some little time for young students to find the reason for it or at least to have a chance to fail. I think it's very, very important. As a person who spent all of my young student years and then go abroad and study uh, what I really wanted to, as a high schooler, I couldn't even choose what kind of major that I want to I mainly just hear lots of opinions of what kind of major is beneficial for your future. I think that's a problem. I hope that young students get more chance to think about, explore, fail about themselves.